Hi everybody! Hi Tamaha! Welcome to another video. And as you know, A Song of Ice and Fire Game of Thrones has created a whole new industry based on speculation like this video, YouTube channels, everything. It's unprecedented in pop culture. You have theories, countless theories. Mm -hmm. And what's the inspiration behind everything? Trying to know, and trying to read up on, on history and all of this to understand where the story is going. Where the story is going. How it will end. Who will sit on the throne. What is he trying to tell us mm -hmm. in this story? They want to ask George R. R. Martin how it will end. And he also, he engages with, a lot with the fans. Right, you like know. meetings with, with fans. Meetings, Yahoo talk, Google talks, whatever. Right. So if I would get the opportunity to okay. ask him one question. What would that question be? I would ask him, George, Mr. Martin. Please, sir. My R. 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 <laughs> How do you view uh, history? I mean, how does George R. R. Martin view history? What is, what is okay. his view on history? So you don't, okay, and you think that question will give you a hint as to where the story is going? Yeah, at least in terms of the trajectory. Because who sits on the throne, who dies, who lives, that's interesting, that's fun. Right, but that's part of where the story is going. It's not yeah. the end, it's not the, the conclusion of the story. Yeah, and I think in his hand answer lies uh, the hint. Okay, but it's a little bit odd that if you want to know something about his story, you're asking a question about history. Why mm -hmm. go to history? Because uh, the raison d'etre of this uh, channel, one of the, it's like seeing this book, reading this book, okay. uh, you know, reading this story as an historical novel. Fantasy story. Fantasy historical novel. Obviously, it's a fantasy world, the fantasy character okay. is all made up, but I th his main uh, inspiration is history. You can definitely see that. Not only a lot of the plot lines or whatever, the characters are in grinded in history, grounded in history. Right. In Real sense, history, right. Inspired by uh, history, right. but also the way he chose to tell the story dedicate a lot of time to political uh, stuff to, uh, right. and to history itself. There right. is a history book about this uh, right. world. And it's written like a proper history book. And since Aegon landed in mm -hmm. Westeros, you have like, like after landing, that's, that's like yeah. history. It's like dated history. Dated history and, and also history in the sense of it is written by someone with an agenda. I mean, right. the, the world of Ice and Fire is, an history, is a history book. Right. And it's written like a history book. By a maester. By a maester, like by this medieval guy that works for Robert. Right. So, obviously, it's, even the history book is a point of view. And, and he made a point in doing that. Right. And also, in the, in the books themselves, each chapter is a point of view. It's yeah. not uh, an objective story. Like, in Lord of the Rings, the history, there's also a lot of history there, yeah. but the history there is more like lore. So it's yeah. like fantasy. You don't know who ruled from this year to that year. And, and it's not dated and nobody mm -hmm. really, really cares. The start of the story itself is on a continuum of like a sort of... Mm -hmm. in, he, right. he, he introduces us to this world basically after the beginning. Right. Like the, the, you need to know about the history of right. the, how we got that Robert is a king right. and the Targaryens are, uh, right. are not there anymore. He could have started at Robert's Rebellion. Yeah, or he could have like uh, created a prologue like 20 years ago, Robert, blah, 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 blah. Right. Like we, Star Wars. Yeah, <laughs> like exactly. the Empire does this and that and that's it. Okay, uh, but right. no, he chose this to give us the point of view of like of the characters that are Experiencing, experiencing history. Experiencing history in front right. of their eyes and are obviously oblivious to it. Right. Like every, like we are oblivious uh, to our continuum. Where are we? Right. What, how could we define this period right. or whatever? It changes over time. Okay, so you ask him the question. Hello, Mr. George, sir. How do you view history? What kind of answer do you expect? Let me elaborate uh, on the question first. Please do. This is why we're here. There is like sort of a reductionist way of looking at history. Mm -hmm. and. Like if history is like a cycle, you know, nothing new under the sun, everything repeats itself, history repeats itself. The costumes are different, but basically we're still humans, we're still doing the same right. thing, same mistakes. Right, sun goes up, sun goes down, earthquake, tsunami. You can't explain that. And, uh, and there's a different approach to history. Like this uh, Martin Luther King, like this, this arc of history. Moral, his, moral arc of the history. Moral, the history has a moral arc that bends towards greater justice right. and stuff like that. Right. It takes time. You might be unlucky in the time where you live and when you were born, but the world 
always gets better for yeah. more people. So you think that if he says, I see history as a cycle, that means that the world will basically stay the same yeah. like it has for Lord of the Rings and other fantasy yeah. stories. Which means like all the suffering, all the death, all the cat uh, cataclysms and stuff like that will just rearrange the players on the board. Right. But we the won. Board, yeah, our team won, whatever, but the board would right. remain the same, right. basically. The monsters lost, we won, and then maybe in a few years there'll be another there, mo other monsters and it's always the same. And there was great rejoice. Yay! <laughs> And if he says, I, I see history as, as ongoing progress, yeah, that tells you... That, that tells me that all these suffering, cataclysms, and etc. This is the price you pay for this progress. For, for positive for progress. For positive progress. It's not about which team will win, but the, all of the stuff that happens in the story is supposed to bring us to this point in which the world itself has, has changed. Right. And the bittersweet ending, the bitter part of the ending, is a lot of people will die, a lot right. of suffering, a lot of death. And history is always bittersweet. Yeah, and the sweet part is someone will survive and grow the seeds right. for a better world uh, right. afterwards. It's like, it's like the way that we look now, say, at the American Civil War. Mm -hmm. A horrible war, horrible war. A lot of people died, it's horrible. But it was a good thing. The world became better afterwards for yeah. more people, maybe not as good as we would have wanted. Yeah. But it became better even at a great price. Mm -hmm. uh, the Black Plague, if we go closer to medieval time, the Black Plague destroyed a third of uh, the European people, around a third to 50%. But after that, it's more hard. people uh, enjoyed, let's say, freedoms or rights because it had to, the political system had to adjust in some way. You, cannot, you couldn't go back to this rigid right. feudal system that which the peasants are serfs and whatever. Okay, and can you identify maybe a cataclysm coming around the corner in the story? Yeah, the winter, the, the, winter. the other. It's I mean, coming. It's uh, from the pro prologue and from the start saying winter is coming, something is changing. Right, uh, right. And for the worse, something is changing. Right, dragons are coming back, magic is coming back, that's also a yeah, big yeah. change. Yeah, yeah, there's gonna be a clash, there's gonna be a catastrophe, there's going to be something and because George R. R. Martin already educated us to not to be too attached to a specific characters because right. everybody's fair game here. Right. In history, everybody can die. History, yeah. So if he sees history as a cycle, and this is indeed, uh, I think you can't argue about it, a uh, historical novel, then it means that one of the people <coughs> from the old regime will win, will be either whatever, Daenerys or Stannis or whatever, this king or that king. Before it was Aegon, then the Mad King, that was bad, okay, now we're going back and everything is the same, the world is the same. Yeah, like in most Tolkien imitators and even Tolkien is saying, uh, himself. Right, and if he sees history as a progress, then this explains why he's destroying all the old institutions mm -hmm. in the land, mm -hmm. and why all the old guard is dying. Mm -hmm. It will explain the cost. And explains the cost. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to to read about about all this suffering? It will not change. Will uh, he goes into detail saying that the wildlings will rather die than bend the knee? Mm -hmm. If they do not bend the knee, that means that the world is different. The world will have to adjust to them. Also, the uh, essence is changing, and you can see the price. I mean, everything Daenerys has has done came with a price. I mean, right. yeah, okay, we all in favor of. The abolish slavery and free the people, but look at the cost. Right. And you can see that in the way that uh, she uh, liberated Astapur, but a few months after that, right. Astapur was again, right. you see the, the struggles of the, the cyclical struggle right. of, of uh, their, you know, uh, the reactionary forces right. and stuff like that. And you could see that you see whatever the French Revolution. If you live during the French Revolution, you think, okay, nothing happened, nothing changed. We had another king, now it's uh, mm -hmm. Caesar, whatever, emperor. But if you look at it long term, then change Something comes. Changing. Yeah, and, it, and it change is ne never comes smoothly, but it's inevitable. And you, I think you can get a lot from his answer because, in my opinion, I think he's uh, more of a progressive mind, uh, and his approach to history yeah. is, is bittersweet. That means death and suffering has to have a payoff, which means better for most people or more people after that. Right. And he's also uh, postmodern, unlike Tolkien, who was a modernist yeah. and a royalist and whatever. So it doesn't make sense for him to leave the world just as he got. 
and he always explains how he's doing something different than mm -hmm. Tolkien. When he's uh, throwing like all the to Tolkien imitators under the bus, he said Tolkien imitators did did something. I'm doing another thing. I'm I'm telling a history. Yeah. I'm, I'm 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 making this all th this fantasy myth. What if it were to be in the real world, in real history? And if it is, then it means that progress is coming. And when you're talking about progress, you mean I mean more rights or more like inclusion or whatever for more people. That doesn't mean that it will be a democracy and uh, heaven on in earth, on right. earth obviously, because it's not like that in the real world. Right. But, you know, maybe a new cast of people, more inclusive, more right. rights, something to the sort more of like... Stable. A, more stable. More stable, something to the sort of like a Magna Carta, this contract, this civil contract. Right. Um, you know, a unified kingdom and stuff right. like that. The historical point that we are now in this story it's sort of like mid late Middle Ages. I mean, like there is like a proto center uh, center government in right. King's Landing. Not very efficient, though. Not very efficient. There are already lots of signs of Renaissance in the right. beyond the sea. You know, the people writing plays and writing history, right? And making deals, and making deal. building banks. Mer yeah, merchant classes right. and, and uh, immigrants. Whatever. Immigrants. Yeah, yeah. Right. And the catastrophe right. that will come maybe will break the cycle. The, mid, the Middle Ages the cycle. The Middle Ages cycle, exactly. Right. Like a, there's, this story is already like a thousand, two thousand years inside of the Middle Ages with kingdoms Come and on. lords and whatever. Move on. People. Yeah, yeah, it's something will uh, come. The catastrophe right. will so, come and change it. Okay, so that means that the, the, the king or queen will not be as they were. It will be something no. different a yeah. little bit. And there will not be seven kingdoms but rather one kingdom one, or two, maybe three, yeah. or maybe seven kingdoms totally separate yeah. that, though i don't i don't think so but it's plausible mm -hmm. something will have to to change in that way so from that you can exp extrapolate to the characters uh, themselves right. in the process of the story right. itself which one fits in yeah, this to new the, world to the new world and right like stannis no, Daenerys I don't think fits to this uh, new world john maybe, maybe not as a monarch though right Brienne. Else. Brianna maybe fits to this new Sam. world. Sam, Sam fits to this new world. Sansa. Tyrion, Sansa. Tyrion depends where his dice uh, his dice f uh, fall. Right, but he but he does fit in the new world. Yeah, he's more flexible, I think, more open-minded. Right. About it. So, what do you think? Do you have a different question that you would ask George R. R. Martin? And can you get us into a meeting with George R. R. Martin so we can ask this question and get you the answers, and then we'll know everything? Boom! Subscribe to get. All our videos, here is a video that you should never tell George R. R. Martin that we shot. It's about how he will not finish the story that Itamar's take. I think he will, but watch it. And want to thank our patrons for supporting our channel. The link is in the description if you want to help us make these videos for the long haul. Also, go to our Twitter and Facebook pages. Follow and like us there. And we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.